What's up guys? We are back with another Mythic Legions All-Stars 5 review, taking a look at another of the new figures this time around, and, and this guy has caused a little bit of a controversy amongst Legions fans. We're taking a look at Dubon. So this guy uh, is in sort of a weird space with his color, I guess we'll say. He has blue or maybe silver armor, depending on which pictures you have been looking at. We're gonna we're gonna put it to the test and find out here. So uh, he comes in our standard Legion style packaging, of course. Figure in the in the window, collector friendly stuff, so you can put him back in. He is a member of Xylona's Flock, so you've got your faction card on one side, you've got your bio card on the other, and then the back of the package gives us the Alithia artwork with a cross sell for All Stars and our Mythos write up. So let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, our Mythic Legions All Stars 5 Dubon, another of the plus side of All-Stars 5, because he is a brand new character, new figure with some pretty cool stuff to offer. There's there's a lot included with this particular release. It's not just your standard kind of figure, and I'm not even talking about the fact that he has a massive soft goods wired cape. So let's see what this guy can do, see how he moves around. I mean, it's, it's a standard 1.0 figure. You're not really going to be surprised here, I'm sure. Let's get this cape kind of out of the way a bit. He does, to start with, have a pretty locked down head. Like, you're not really going to do a whole lot with this outside of swivel it. Uh, it does have a little bit of bobble, but it's a hooded head, so that on its own kind of presents its own problems. You've also got a cape underneath that, and then when you get pauldrons on it, you're going to have even less range. So you are going to have to work with that. The arms, of course, go all the way out. You can rotate them. We've got our single-jointed Pretty good, like 90 degree single joint there, rotating elbow. You've got swivel at the gauntlets, swivel and hinge at those wrists, you know, normal stuff there. He is a 1.0 figure, so you've got your normal buck torso. Can't really go back too far, because he's got sort of like a big thick belt here, but he can still go forward a decent bit, so that's nice. You've got your tilt, and it's also your swivel point. Legs go all the way out, of course. They kick forward all the way. Even with the skirt piece, it does allow for a good range of movement there. Kick backwards also, and you've got a thigh twist up there. Single joint, but basically 90 degree swiveling knee. And then of course we've got swivel at the top of the ankle. A little bit of rocker. He does have kind of uh, fat boots and he has the armor piece, so you are going to hit those, but it's pretty decent rocker. And then you've got your hinge down there. Nothing really in the way on those hinges. So again, Basically your normal 1.0 figure. He is a little bit different though just because of the virtue of having having the soft goods cape in conjunction with the hood. It just does sort of lock things down a little bit, but I haven't had too many issues posing this guy around. Otherwise, I'm really enjoying a little bit deeper cut on these elbows and these knees with some of these more recent parts. It really does add a lot more range to your standard 1.0 style figure. What I really like about Dubon though, and if you watch any Legion's reviews for me, you know exactly what I'm going to say is visuals. I really like this sort of ranger aesthetic that he has. I'm very much I'm very much picturing this as the counterpoint in some ways to Valak in the Alithia wave. You know, they're both like ranger tracker style of figures. He's a particularly interesting character based on his bio if you care about the lore for legions in terms of him being, you know, not an elf within Xylona's flock, so that's kind of different. He has a different color scheme. He doesn't really match up with their specific colors. He's also going to go really, really well with Boreas, I believe. I haven't, I haven't taken him out to even try it yet, but I'm quite certain that's that's going to work. What, of course, is the, is the elephant in the room, though, with this guy is the colors and what people got versus what were expected. And honestly, I'm not on either side of this one because I think he looks just fine, really. I, I, people think he looks two silver people were expecting a lot more blue and it's like to me he is both like this is literally a blue hue to some of the leather pieces and then he has sort of a like an arctic almost silver blue thing going on with his like uh torso armor with the chest piece there so it seems fine to me i like the way this looks it definitely has a a blue hue to it it's not just silver it's certainly not gray uh, by any means either and i think he looks all right i like this sort of uh, dirtiness to his to his undersuit here and you've just got a lot of fabric pieces on this guy which of course we're seeing more of but he has a lot of it and i really really like that it just makes him look a little bit different he's not some huge armored knight character or figure 
He's not meant to be that kind of thing. He's a little bit different. He does have some armor, but he is, you know, maybe a little bit more mobile. He's going to be somebody that uh, is, you know, your ranger or, you know, your tracker type of character. And I think that's that's pretty cool. I do really like a lot of these parts, and I think they work really nicely in combination within this color scheme. There's a lot of possibility for popping and swapping, of course, if you're somebody who does that. I know I like to do it, but I don't do enough of it. But I'm really happy with this configuration of parts. I feel like I feel like Dubon's going to offer a lot to people who are into popping and swapping more so than some of the other figures in this in this way because there's a lot of different things. You've got your actual armor, you've got leather pieces, you've got cloth pieces. There's a bunch of different a different textures, I guess is the best way to say it when it comes to this figure. Not to mention the fact that this dude has a gnarly an absolutely gnarly soft goods wired cape. And it is big. This is a big old monster. So it's a huge, huge cape. I mean, it's completely, completely enormous, fully wired all the way around. And despite being so big, like you can pretty easily just sort of cinch it back. And, you know, he's going to be like a man of mystery on your shelf almost because this hood does kind of obscure a lot of his, uh, of his face. But I think the combination of this hood and this cape works really well, specifically because the colors, they're not perfect. But they're so, so, so close. The, the colors on this plastic versus the colors on this fabric, the match is really, really good. So they did a nice job to make that look as seamless as possible. Because I'm not a huge fan of hoods on figures. I always find them to look wonky when it comes to fabric ones. So I'm not, I'm not too upset about this sort of mixed media approach to a hooded cape for him. What I really don't like, and it's, you know, it's not the biggest deal because, again, like I said, he, he could be like a man of mystery on your shelf in many ways. You can't see a lot of his face, like I mentioned. You gotta kinda get up in there. And his face looks really, really good. Like, this is a solid head sculpt. I love the beard. I love those piercing eyes, too. They're super bright and vibrant and just saturated in color, and you just can't really see him. So he does look, you know, a little bit more mysterious, kind of shrouded in mystery there, but I, I do kind of like that also, so it's a give and a take on that. But I'm really, really happy with him. He He's definitely going to be one that uh, I know folks are going to be able to utilize on the horse, but on his own, and then, of course, if you like to, to pull figures apart and take these parts apart, then you've got a lot of different options, a lot of different pieces, a lot of different styles just in this one figure. Now, as far as accessories goes, Dubon is kind of an outlier in a good way. He has a lot of stuff, and it's not just a bunch of weapons, because he has like a normal array of weaponry. It's what he comes with beyond that. He has so much more in conjunction with the fact that he has this huge wired cape and is still a standard figure. So, you again, you get a lot with this guy. To start with, we do get the pauldrons, and, you know, these are some of the more basic but newer style pauldrons that we've gotten. I think he absolutely benefits from having these on, beefs him up a little bit, and I think that shock of color on his shoulders really works well in conjunction with that cape. It does make things a little tight up there. You've got a, you've got a hooded head, you've got a cape, and you've got pauldrons. So there is stuff in the way, and I still think he looks the best with all of this on, because the hood without the cape does kind of look a little awkward to me, but your mileage may vary. So I do think we get some really solid pauldrons there. And just like I mentioned with him being sort of a counterpoint to Valak, he also gets one of the birds. So he gets a little buddy, and this is one of the birds that sits on the wrist. So Valak has the bird with the hood. Dubon has the bird that has a new head sculpt here. And what it is, is you take the hand off and it, the bird is connected to the cuff that then sits over top of his gauntlet. So you slide that over top of the wrist and the bird will sit there. This bird does have articulation. Uh, the head can move, that's it, that's all it has. But there's a tremendous level of detail on this thing. Tons of sculpt, tons of paint, and I'm really happy that they're sort of exploring this side of things a little bit more, just to give us another one of these. Because as much as I like Valak's bird, I much more prefer a bird that you can actually see the whole head on. It just seems a little bit more engaging to me. Now, he also includes actual weaponry, of course, and it's it's sort of a standard affair. You've got one of the knives with sort of like the broad knife, and it has sort of like the... A lot of his stuff has sort of like this greenish color. It's a dark green, so it's different from his actual color scheme, which is interesting. So you've got that. We've got a crossbow which doesn't seem to include an arrow, which perfect, honestly I'm kind of fine with. I always end up shooting those across the room, but we've, we've seen these, you know, a million times now. And he includes a sword, which I really like this green and black color scheme on the hilt, with a brown sheath that can, of course, be strapped onto his, uh, onto his, onto his uh, belt there. So you've got a, a, a sword, sort of a standard sword, standard knife, standard crossbow. 
He keeps going though, because there's more stuff here. And this is where this figure really becomes a little bit even more different because he essentially includes a hand pack also. We get four total sets of hands with this figure. So he has gripping hands on him in the box. And these are side to side, laterally hinging gripping hands. But he also includes a set, and of course a set is gonna be two, of vertically hinged gripping hands, which are really useful when it comes to the crossbow in particular. So you get a set of vertically hinged gripping hands. We get a set of fists. And these are all like the leather gauntlet style, so newer style hands. And you get a set of the style posy, you know, wide gripping, gesturing, you know, combat style hands. So he comes with three extra sets on top of the bird, on top of the pauldrons, on top of the cape, on top of the weapons. Tons of stuff. The only thing he doesn't have is the actual strap and the back adapters, which, you know, I'm drowning in them anyway, so it's not a huge deal. But this is what I mean when I, when I say he includes a lot of stuff. Not only does he have a lot of varied parts when it comes to the figure in general, but he has a lot of varied accessories. It's your weapons, it's a buddy, it's the cape, it's the pauldrons, and the hands. This, this guy is stacked with just a bunch of stuff. So yeah, overall, really, really happy with this figure. And again, it's for a number of reasons. I'm enjoying some of this slightly increased range on some of these newer parts of reading, you know, in terms of the legs and the arms. It's always nice to be able to move these figures a little bit better. I think the sculpt on all of these pieces, of course, are always up to Legion's quality. It's everything you expect them to be. Paintwork is tremendous. I love this color. You know, whatever you think the color should or shouldn't be, I think it looks really awesome. It's a nice, unique color. We don't see a lot of this in the line. He comes with an amazing soft goods cape. And he comes with a ton of accessories on top of the fact that you get this cape. I mean, he has a bunch of hands in there. We're, we basically get a small hands pack with this one figure. So if you get a couple of them, you have tons of these sort of leather hands that you can use on other figures. And frankly, for a normal figure, they gave us more than we usually get with this guy. So I'm certainly not complaining there. So that's going to do it for this look at the Mythic Legion's All-Stars 5 Plus Dubon. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.